What's going on, everybody? Hope you're having a great day today. Blake Neiman here again. And the 2020-21 NBA season was always going to be difficult, no matter what, as the league attempted to play through the pandemic without the bubble setup that worked so well for last year's playoffs. But they decided to bring it here, and the NBA entered the new year, coming off of its shortest offseason in league history, with only 72 days separating Game 6 of the 2020 NBA Finals, where the Lakers won in the bubble, and the start of this NBA regular season. The regular season was defined by COVID-related absences and postponed games, but the real toll of this league's condensed calendar is coming to a head in the playoffs. The result has been ugly. If I could describe this NBA season in one word, it would be pain. The fans are experiencing pain. The owners are experiencing pain. The networks and their ratings are experiencing pain. And most of all, the players are experiencing pain. We saw yet two more superstars go down this week in Trey Young and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Just when you things, think things couldn't get any worse, they do. Absolutely no one is safe in this season. I'm just in shock of how many of these playoff series have been soured by injuries. We have the Sun series soured by an 80 injury. The Bucks and Nets series soured by the injuries of two superstars, the double whammy in Kyrie Irving and James Harden. And both conference finals now have been soured by the absence of Kawhi Leonard for the Clippers, CP3 for the first two games for the Suns, and now the Bucks versus Hawks series is just a toss up without Ice Trey or the Greek Freak. It's just not good for basketball really taking the spice out of all these games this is the biggest the nba's biggest nightmare and they have no one else to blame but to look in the mirror and look at themselves Yon, young and Giannis joined the ever-growing list of nba players affected by injury during the playoffs let me just name off a few all of them including chris paul Kawhi leonard james harden lebron james joel Embiid, anthony davis Jamal Murray, Donovan Mitchell, Jalen Brown, and Mike Conley. Nine all-star players, eight of whom missed at least one game during the playoffs. Several were the difference between their team moving on or ending their season. And they were they were completely affected by the and that is not a question none in question of the capabilities of those players. They are elite talents, and we barely saw any of them in the playoffs this year. It is crazy like i said earlier almost all of the nba's biggest storylines in the nba have been directly because of the injuries we'll never know if the lakers could have repeated champions with james and davis battling injuries throughout the regular season and the playoffs the nuggets looked like real contenders in the west for the majority of the season around mvp nikola Jokic, but he was great this season but then they lost the, one of the greatest playoff players last in last year's playoffs, if not the best, in Jamal Murray with a torn ACL. The Nets barely even played full strength all last year with the big three playing eight total regular season games together and having missed both Harden and Irving for extended periods of the postseason. The Clippers had a real shot with playoff P, not pandemic P, playoff P coming around, but then Kawhi was eliminated from the equation with a knee injury. And now we are left with the Hawks and the Bucks, both without their best players, in a series for a ticket to the NBA Finals. Look, there was no good way to play the 2020-21 season. I understand that. But the NBA ensured it was going to be as brutal and hard as possible. Aiming to profit off of as many games as possible, the league adopted a a barely shortened 72-game schedule, only taking off 10 games that it tried to fit into a condensed calendar. The season began on December 22nd rather than mid-October and finished the regular season just one month after it would normally concluded. It's barely even shorter. Thus, this essentially cuts four weeks from the normal NBA calendar and cut only just 10 games. That's not enough for such a short offseason. There were more games, 
less rest, which caused a breeding around a breeding ground for injury. Then when the playoffs arrived, the league gave itself no breathing room on the back end, forcing a breakneck pace to finish everything up before the Olympic Games, which are scheduled to begin at the end of this month in July. There was talk about how grueling this season would be in the beginning, but we have most we were mostly just happy to have basketball back. Now the league is reaping what it's so sought out to do, and it's they are just regretting every moment of it. Why the season needed to be seventy two games and not say fifty two defines belief. The result is quantity rather than quality, with the game's brightest stars pay, paying the biggest price. These mounting injuries and the disappointing end of the season is an unforced air from one of the world's biggest sports leagues in the NBA, just a disappointment on their part. They put money over athletes, their safety, and the quality of the game. In the end, fans will pay for whatever, end, whatever ending we'll get out of this season, and that's a real shame. All in all, the NBA will look back at one of their worst seasons in NBA history and have no one to blame but themselves. Very unfortunate, all these injuries. I can't say enough how unfortunate it is. I would love to see superstars battling it out. Who wanted, I know about everyone wanted to see Lakers fight for back-to-back while these new Nets try and take them down. I would have loved to see that. Or even just uh, the Clippers team make the NBA Finals had Kawhi not gotten hurt. I believe they would have won that series. But we can't take away from these teams right now. Now, Obviously, we can a little bit because of the injuries. But, I mean, the championship is a championship. But overall, all the injuries, are I blame them on the NBA. Just completely terrible on their part on scheduling this season, on condensing and putting all. And it's all about that dough. All about that money. That was all. All that was on the NBA's mind this season, and it ultimately resulted in a lot of their ratings going down because of how poor of uh, play and how many superstars were out. It's just at one point in the, it's uh, in the playoffs, you just can't. When you don't see superstars, what's the point of watching them if you know it's going to be a blowout and a super lopsided matchup and not a competitive battle of this world's best superstars? And we just didn't get that because of it, all of their own league's fault. So. Very unfortunate. I hope Giannis and Trey, I wish them quick recovery so I can see them back, hopefully for a Game 6 and Game 7 battle uh, between the two superstars. And hopefully one of them gets back for the finals to face off against the Suns, who is actually full health right now, which is good. Oh, cross my fingers, knock on wood. Gosh, please. Uh, but thank you for all for tuning in, and I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great night.